Hello and welcome to the second video on the Reformation. This one's all about war, slaughter, persecution, and the Counter-Reformation. In SOL 3b, we will describe the impact of religious conflicts, the Inquisition, and Catholic Reformation on society and government actions by writing a narrative that considers the changing role of religion in Europeans' lives. The big picture is that the Reformation had its roots in disagreements about theology, but it led to important economic and political changes. Religious differences and hatreds caused war and destruction during this time period as well. So at first, the Reformation was all about theology, which is a systematic set of beliefs about religion. And generally, a person who studies that is called a theologian, and they sit around and they think and talk and write about what is correct and what is incorrect in religions. Uh, the Protestants were, just like most previous dissenters, uh, just like Jan Hus and also John Wycliffe at first, they mostly thought about the religious aspects of it, and they were political only in the sense that you need to be political because there's no separation between church and state. But they certainly weren't political on a national scale, and they certainly didn't have the support on a national scale, uh, so that put them in serious danger. But then something happens. The northern German princes go Protestant, and they start supporting the Protestant cause with you know, their armies and their little countries. So the Habsburgs and the Holy Roman Empire stay Catholic. So it's northern Germans versus the southern Germans, basically. And the Habsburgs were a family that controlled the Holy Roman Empire and actually huge chunks of Europe. Um, so here's this map. When it's all just this olive color, like right now, right now, um, you can see that's what it was like before. That's all Catholic area, the green. But then the Reformation happens, and that's the second set of, the first set of blue, like right there. And then the Counter-Reformation happens and pushes some of that blue back. So this northern area up here, where the blue stays, though, that's northern Germany. And those northern German princes provide a base of support for the Protestant Reformation. And we'll get, you know, England also, like we talked about last time with King Henry VIII, that other movements did not have, did not have that strong, effective base of support to continue the fight uh, for independence and the ability to think differently than the church in Europe. But then the Thirty Years' War starts. So at first it seemed like it was great. You know, you get some political support, you get to keep your religion, you get to have your separate ideas, and everything is fine. But it turns out that having a different religion than your neighbor when religion is so important to you like it was back then can result in some pretty horrible wars. And in this case, it starts out as Protestants versus Catholics in Germany. And very quickly people begin to see the horrifying effects of religious warfare. They thought that, you know, going to war for your religion would result in some sort of glorious battles and all that, but really war is war. And these wars in particular destroyed, killed, the Thirty Years' War killed about half the population of Germany. Half, half, more than the Black Death did. And uh, you can see that depicted here in a later um, print of these soldiers who were uh, hanging, just hanging up rebellious townsfolk. Or perhaps, I don't, don't remember if this, yeah, rebellious townsfolk. Um, so, but beyond that, it gets really complicated, and let me show you why. So here's the Wikipedia page. The Thirty Years' War was between 1618 and 1648, one of the most destructive conflicts in European history. And you can see that there were some important results. The, the Treaty of Westphalia uh, resulted in a new sort of way of Europe operating with itself and having a balance of power, but it was so complicated. Look at all the countries that were involved. Look at all the, the countries. This is on the Protestant side, also including the Ottoman Empire, who were Muslim, and the Russian Tsardom, who were uh, Christian, but Orthodox Christians. And over here is all the Roman Catholic countries. Here's the long, long, long list of their commanders. And this long Wikipedia page is just scratching the surface of all the information you could learn about the Thirty Years' War. And I don't even know about it that much myself. But it did result in some pretty interesting things, like the religious intolerance that resulted from this war led to all those witch hunts, just like you probably heard about in Salem in the United States. Those were a result of the ones happening in Europe, which came from the Thirty Years' War. But beyond that complication, France comes out looking pretty good. In France, uh, the Huguenots, which was the French term for the Protestants who lived there, were granted freedoms in the Edict of Nates. And as a result, they did pretty well for themselves in France at first. It was later revoked. It was later like pulled back, and they were persecuted almost out of existence. But at the time, it was really useful because 
uh, France was able to play both sides a little bit and make the war more about politics than religion. And that allowed them to basically take some land for themselves, get some concessions from other French countries. This is Cardinal Richelieu who masterminded that switch from a religious to a political set of warfare. And here's him at a siege. That was the coolest picture I've ever seen of him with that armor. It's really awesome. All right. Then there's this thing called the Counter-Reformation. Uh, the Catholic Church, in an attempt to reconcile with the Protestants, kind of, called a thing called the Council of Trent, which was this uh, pulling together of different religious minds and representatives from different religious groups to discuss the problems and suggest solutions. And as a, But no Protestant showed up to this, and so almost all of the doctrines and practices of the Catholic Church remained exactly the same. Uh, but... Coming out of this time period, there was also this group called the Society of Jesus. The Jesuits uh, were founded. And they had a couple different missions, but mainly it was to spread the Christian religion, particularly Catholic Christian religion, and a very particular interpretation of it uh, through education, and they became highly involved with that. You'll still see Jesuit colleges in the United States, and also through going and spreading the religion in foreign lands, which is why um, the Jesuits were important in both France's colonies in the uh, New World, in Canada, and also down in like Mexico, South America, where Spain had a lot of colonies. Finally, there was this thing called the Inquisition, which is basically like a secret police of religion who were used to enforce Catholic doctrine in Catholic countries. And as a result, Protestants ended up with some real power in stable states, which meant that they weren't just going to disappear and fly out of existence uh, as soon as the Catholic Church decided to just stamp them out like previous dissenters had been. And Protestantism becomes established. In fact, it became really too late to suppress them after the Thirty Years' War. Or was it? Diabolical laughter. Diabolical laughter. Yes, it was. Because very clearly you can see from this map that after the beginnings of the Reformation, you had this orange and this purple and this pink are all different kinds of Protestant sects. You see the Lutheran sect, right, like um, Martin Luther, Anglican, right, like King Henry VIII set up, and Calvinist, as in John Calvin. So it was Calvinist up in Scotland, it was Anglican in Church of England. You see little pockets of Calvinism. Here are Huguenot centers over here in France, those French Protestants. Here's the Lutheran Church, which spreads all the way through Northern Europe like that but then still a lot of Catholic area. That said, it was way too late to just stamp out Protestantism like they had Jan Hus and John Wycliffe.